Corvette looks to technical partner k -Tech Engines to supply horsepower. Cylinder head and block design are done in-house by GM Racing, but overall development is done by k -Tech. GM Racing has worked with k -Tech literally for years and years. This is not the first program by any stretch. They've had success in Trans Am, the Oldsmobile Road Racing Program. That evolved into the four-valve Aurora V8 Road Racing Program, which was done entirely here. Virtually all of the early Indy Racing League development was done here, same thing. The cylinder head and block designed within General Motors, all of the development done here at K-Tech. The Corvette C5R project began in earnest in 1997 with a six-liter engine. It soon became apparent that to run competitively with the Dodge Viper's all-conquering eight-liter V10, a jump in displacement was necessary. You realize all of these engines are restricted. They have to take all their air through these little orifices, which are the size of those is dictated not only by the displacement, but by the weight of the car. Even though as, as the displacement increases, the restrictor size decreases. It's still an advantage to have the higher displacement. We talked about, for a while, going to the big block so we could get eight liters. Now, the, the packaging is horrendous problems, packaging. We, we, we discarded that idea pretty quick, uh, looked at the, the LS1 architecture and said, how big can we make this and still have it be reliable? and seven liters look to be the maximum. The move to seven liters was exactly the shot of adrenaline needed in the C5R. Wins last year at Texas, the Petit Le Mans, and this year's Rolex 24 at Daytona are proof. But K-Tech is not resting on its laurels. Steps toward greater horsepower are ongoing, but air restrictors make it tricky. Historically, if you want to make more horsepower, you spin the thing faster. You process more air, you put the fuel with it, and you make more horsepower. Well, to try and pump more air through these restrictors is not going to happen. But technically, they go sonic, and it doesn't matter what you do downstream of an orifice that's gone sonic. So what do you have left? You have all of the parasitics. A parasitic loss is anything within the engine that consumes horsepower that doesn't come out the crankshaft at the back of the crankshaft and through the flywheel and the clutch and the drive shaft to the wheels. Part of the development back here is looking at the frictional losses. So you, you, you motor the engine. We have a 300 horsepower electric motor that actually drives the engine. There's no fuel, there's no spark, no combustion is taking place. At 6,000 RPM, it takes 130 horsepower just to spin the engine. You claim you have a 600 horsepower engine when you put it in the car. You actually have a 730 horsepower engine. That's because 130 of it you don't get unless you start paying attention to those losses. If you can drop that 130 horsepower frictional loss down to 110 with smaller bearings, lighter weight oil, whatever you can do, now you've got 620 horsepower engine out the crankshaft because it's still going to make the 730 total. It's just, where's it going? 